Tēnā koutou katoa. Uh, thank you for being here. Um, my name is Inês uh, and this is Sharmila. I'm from Portugal. Sharmila is from India and we are here today to present you the project we are currently working on, um, which goal is to develop map-based tools for Māori communities, for iwi, <coughs> tribes in Rūnanga, for tribal councils. So first I would like to acknowledge the large team of researchers that are working with us in particular, Professor Angus McFarlane and Jude Penny and Ruya Caldwell, who are the facilitators and are facilitating the communication and connections with the community partners, the Māori communities we are working with. <coughs> Sorry if I cough in the meantime. <coughs> so this project uh, looks at developing collaborative uh, geospatial planning tools to promote collaborative planning in Aotearoa, New Zealand by including local knowledge from Māori communities in town planning. And so Mātauranga, it's central in this research project and refers to individual or collective knowledge, wisdom, understanding of whenua, of the land. And so these place-based tools intend to enable a better embeddedness of Mātauranga <coughs> Māori in town planning by connecting the mainstream planning with Māori planning. Another goal is to promote Tino Ranga Tiratanga, so to support communities in self-determining through the co-creation of these tools. So we, we are building these tools with them and not only for them, and also um, supporting communities in enabling their autonomy and then their leadership in planning. Also reclaiming Tereo, it's um, a goal for this project and that's why this planning uh, tools um, need to be bilingual and embed Tikanga and Kaupapa Māori principles, so their protocols, their um, ways of doing things. And to facilitate this, we have to immerse researchers that I mentioned previously uh, that uh, we affiliate with the communities, Māori communities we are working with, Ngāti Fukaua and Ngāti Ahuriri. And above all, these tools must enable fanangatanga, so connectedness between people, build the, building the sense of belonging, of um, family connection through shared knowledge, shared experiences, <coughs> and also addressing the need for intergenerational knowledge exchange. So these planning tools are designed to be not only planning tools, but also tools that support communities in preserving their knowledge and their identity. So this project focuses on two case studies, one in Rotorua district in the North Island, more specifically in Ohinemutu village, and another one in Waimakiriri district in the South Island, uh, in the Tua Hiwi village, where our community partners, Nati Fukawe and Nai Tua Huriri, respectively, are part of the thinking and leadership of the project. So it's important to maintain an active and iterative communication with the community representatives in order to embed their views, their perspectives, and to make sure that the user experience of the tools um, reflect their ways of learning, doing, knowing, sharing, so their tikanga, their customary ways of, of doing things, their system of values. So the first research question of this project is uh, what tools can support a better integration of Mataranga and Tikanga in town planning? And since the current planning processes, data and information are often dispersed and disconnected, which makes it difficult for communities to uh, weave cultural mapping with urban revi uh, revitalization, urban regeneration, environment management, uh, there's a need to strengthen the engagement of Māori Fenua communities in town planning. So Māori communities have authority over the land. And uh, our researchers realize that story maps are definitely a key part of the answer. So uh, mapping traditional narratives in local Mataranga, so local knowledge, to ground town planning activities. However, we need something more than a story builder because there are some ready-to-use solutions, proprietary or not, easier or more complex to use. But the thing is that our partnering communities need um, tools that reflect their ways of sharing information, their tikanga, their, their governance, tools that um, are bicultural, not only bilingual, uh, tools that um, allow to upload culturally, culturally relevant layers and to examine potential land uses, for instance. Tools that inform about planning processes. So altogether, there's a need 
for tools that are able to allow uh, collaborative processes of documenting uh, cultural narratives and creating uh, planning strategies. So the initial, in the initial, initial stages, uh, both case studies focused on finding out what current special data exists for both villages and uh, documenting and mapping the traditional narratives of these villages um, related to traditional and contemporary uses of the land, for instance, in order to support Fano family, Maori families, and to reconnect with the Fenua and uh, reaffirm the cultural identity of these villages and the enhance the sense of place to serve as basis to a second stage of documenting visions and aspirations for these villages, supporting Fano uh, Maori communities uh, in leading planning processes and informing it about the procedural steps involving different types of development for these villages, more specifically, specifically for Tuahiu, it's for revitalization and in Ohinemu to the goal is regeneration. So this is a praise prototype we have to date, we have developed to date. Uh, as I mentioned, the community partners are part of the thinking and so they are crucial for the conceptualization and co-designing of the tool. Uh, and so everything is being continually defined, refined uh, as we proceeded with, developers, with the developments, uh, what poses some challenges for us developers both of us, so we are the WebJS developers of this project, uh, especially in translating communities' views and research-based content into the development of the tools. Um, and so this is the prototype we have so far, that it's a base prototype that will be uh, later developed in two different tools will address uh, the specific needs of each uh, case study. So we have the layers functionality working, where the users can uh, access data from external data services, such as from LINs or from MFE, with appropriate attribution, of course, like aerial, aerial imagery, property titles, uh, protected areas, so on and so forth. Or the users can upload their own data sets, raster or vector, and restyle the layers, rename them, access data attributes, and so on. So. Uh, these layers, external or uploaded by the users, are important because, in a way, will give context to the narrative that will be added in, to the tool, and in another way, will support and enable that, that second phase of documenting visions for the villages. These are some of the layers that we would like to provide by default in the tool, like cadastral and uh, use zoning or places of significance, <coughs> since that the Maori communities might not be used to this kind of data sets and um, operations. It's already possible uh, to um, add the cultural narratives to the tool uh, by adding bodies of text, uploading media files, uh, images, audio, videos, dragging and dropping these elements of the, the story, drawing uh, geometries on the map and adding to specific parts of the story, like a story builder, um, uploading media files to specific geometries. So it's all of these uh, functionalities that will um, enable local Matoronga, that local knowledge that will then uh, support the village uh, planning activities. The collaborative part, it's what we are starting developing, so uh, that structure of governance that <coughs> reflects the Ritikanga um, uh, through which uh, a storyteller can uh, co-create a narrative with another other users by asking them to collaborate in stories. So users from the Fano, Hapu, or Iwi. So there's a, a governance structure. Uh, and when the storytellers are happy with the story, they can submit it. And a kaitiaki of that kinship sector, uh, called the guardian, will then validate the story and provide guidance to improve the narrative if necessary. And once ready, the story can be published in the kinship sector that was submitted, and everyone belonging to that group will have access to the story, can appreciate it, provide comments, feedback, and so on. So the storytellers are able to um, update the narrative at any time following this katyaki um, validation process. <coughs> this next structure um, <coughs> represents the arrangement and governance of our tool. There are four uh, clusters. These are examples only. And uh, the, each cluster can have one or more kaitiakis. Um, they are the validators. The, they are represented as uh, the solid small circles in the diagram. 
So uh, these validators uh, will review the story and um, approve it for publication. The user can choose whether he wants his story to be made public or parts of the story to be made public so that everyone can read. The reader doesn't need to be a registered user to read the public narratives in this case. And this is the organizational chart of Ohinomutu tool. I will not go into all the details. Uh, this uh, tool has the temporal component, which is the timeline, and the spatial component, that is the mapping of location, and the narratives, which are linked to one or more gods according to Maori themes. The focus of the tool is about uh, landscape features, um, especially the hot springs in the Ohinomutu village and urban regeneration of Ohinomoto village. And this is the organizational chart of uh, Tuahivi tool. And this also has the timeline component and um, mapping of location and narratives which, which are linked to Maori gods. And the focus here is on um, land use and also the um, urban uh, revitalization of Tuahivi village. Um, these, tools, these tools have the potential to bridge the gap between uh, Maori communities and the planners by taking into account these Maori values and um, supporting them spatially and um, supporting engagement through visualization. <coughs> so this is a technological stack used so far. Uh, we are using Vue uh, as a client framework because of the syntax, the simplicity, the reusability of components, the reactivity, uh, and so on. Open layers for the uh, interactive display of map data and manipulation of data. <coughs> uh, that comes from external data services or from internal data services that the users upload and um, are created using GeoServer. So GeoServer API is used to publish the geospatial data, service that data sets that the users upload. Django for the backend because of Python, the built in admin, Geo Django, <coughs> and so on. Django REST framework for the API, and uh, PostgreSQL extended with uh, PostGIS that in, uh, provides um, spatial functions and geometry data types to the database, and everything containerized using Docker that uh, enables virtual running and portability. Uh, several other JavaScript <coughs> libraries and uh, Python modules uh, are being used and deserve to be mentioned uh, due to the incredible features that allows us to develop tools quickly and reliably. So here they are. <coughs> Regarding the database model, there's nothing in particular that uh, we want to mention, only that the orange bits are still things uh, under discussion, so um, like the governance structure, what involves user roles, um, access rights, things like this, or the reusability of geometries or layers in different narratives. So this level of uncertainty demands that um, we are continually looking ahead when we are designing the database and trying to do it as much as flexible as possible, since that big changes might be required in the future while new requirements come to light as we proceed. So, and this is the kind of challenges that we developers face when dealing with ongoing process of co-creating and co-designing tools. But, uh, you know, it's this kind of work that will allow us to ensure that the tools will suit the Maori communities and will 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 be meaningful um, for Maori communities. So, yeah. So, why we want to go with a free open source software? That's because of the public nature of this project. Uh, we want the communities to use it for free and to minimize the dependency from proprietary software and the free ongoing use. We want these tools to be used even after the funding ends for this project. And other obvious reasons, of course, are the large degree of freedom in tool customization, wide adoption, and vast number of available libraries. And um, the reliability it comes with due to large community continuously uh, developing and improving solutions over time. And our future steps. Through our tools, we will provide information to support FANAO in initiating processes related to land reutilization, revitalization, and regeneration. 
we will continue working on the acknowledgement of maturanga maori and tikanga our tools will reflect these values and we will address future needs identified by communities uh, these two communities um, the wahinamoto village and wahivi village for their place based town planning tools namihi thank you I just wanted to ask um, what difficulties you guys have faced sort of having a, a scientific matrix overlaid with a Mātauranga Māori um, matrix. Yeah. Uh, in our case, um, we are a bit in, we have the research team in, in between. We are trying to co participate in these meetings with Māori communities, but usually uh, we already have the we already have the um, requirements a bit of translated, but uh, the thing is that we have, like I said in the beginning, uh, Professor Angus Mafferlane uh, from the University of Canterbury, and he works closely with the communities, and um, we um, make sure that we have a, a, a continual connection with the Maori communities to have this um, translation and uh, to, under, to make sure that we don't have kind of a Western interpretation of uh, Mātauranga Māori and Kaupapa Māori. Thank you. Do you have any responses from user testing um, from the communities as they you know, utilise the tool in development? In, in not yet. So um, we have immersed researchers that are uh, from Ma those, those Maori communities who are working with us and are continually work, uh, talking with the community. And for instance, in December, um, early December, we'll have the first all together and showing the prototype and start getting some feedback in terms of look and feel. So that's why this is kind of a skeleton in terms of functionalities. And this is really the beginning because it's just the layers, functionalities uh, working and the story narrative, cultural narratives are already being added. But the, the, the big part then will um, appear with the governance structure being put in place and also the um, planning processes. So that's the final goal. So is to help them in leading planning processes and informing about these process steps. And in a way and in a way we want that the kind of these uh, cultural narratives will uh, be an archive, not only an archive or a repository of narratives, but in a way will inform then the planning. So that's the, the connection between both parts. <coughs> Maybe a little bit more technical question. You have mentioned that you're using a lot of different data sets on the visualization from free available data to community data. Do, how do you deal with the difference in resolution? Because your community projects are pretty like, focused on a specific area, and some data sets are quite coarse resolution. So how do you deal with that? In this case, we are st uh, still defining the external data services that will add to the tool by default that will be present there and this will be um, mainly um, the aerial imagery aerial imagery and then mostly vector data from lens and from ministry for environment uh, and then in terms of the layers uploaded by the users well that is uh, up to the user to update uh, the best the layers that represent the, the what they want to see Firstly, congratulations on a, an excellent project, and I hope it uh, goes really well. Are you going to actually be able to push any data back into uh, open communities like OpenStreetMap and the like? Uh, I know the narratives won't be there, but uh, will you be able to actually uh, push some data? Yeah, this is the a huge conversation, and still being a huge conversation with the community partners, and that's why this all governance structure, because 
well, in terms of cultural narratives, they want to keep it for themselves. Uh, but that's why we kind of negotiate a bit this functionality of allowing um, to select parts of the story that might be public. So, and it was our way to try to get something from, from the cultural narrative saying that, okay, through this um, governance, you will um, be able to select, okay, this part to the public is, is possible, <coughs> but we want to keep this to ourselves. So, well, let's see how it goes. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> I know. Any more questions? Just a point to, to add. Uh, maybe, this is a thought I've been having because I've, I've been a staunch open data advocate in the Philippines for the longest time. And then, you know, I went around and talked with the communities and maybe it's all right for some things to then maybe that's okay. Some things could be shared and some things could be hidden. For example, in the Philippines, because uh, I come from there, um, whenever uh, a mountain is mapped, the military comes and bombs the village. Yeah, in Mindanao and indigenous communities. And that was an eye opener for me. Uh, okay, me as an open data advocate, even as a Filipino already living there, yeah. I should be more nuanced and uh, not universalist uh, in, in this. Uh, it varies case to case, by the way. But yeah. I just want to say that there are some unintended consequences when, when the push for open data is yeah, too, too strong. And for me, uh, I'm thinking about it very seriously right now. Uh, I just want to say that. Yeah. Yeah. But I think that in a way, um, sorry, just to complete that, even because I think that these tools uh, are for them, that's why we are doing this effort, creating them with them. Um, and uh, but in a way, even if they want to keep the cultural narratives uh, in their um, group, I think that makes sense because there are some conversations, at least in sharing the code, and that is, I think, it's a great um, collaboration already. If the 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 code becomes uh, open source, so I think it's I'm happy with that. Okay. Still in discussion then. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ines and Shamila. Can we have a round of applause for this?